Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 464, being recorded on August 23rd, 2017. I'm Ryan Shrout. I'm Jeremy Holstrom. I'm Josh Walrus. And I'm Alan Malventano. And look how golden colored now the background is. On the- Ooh. Was it not that color before? No, it was not. It was never that color oh, before. Oh, because of the camera you mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, we've, we're trying a different camera out today on the podcast. This is the first time we've hooked it up. So if it looks better or worse or eh or whatever, let us know either in the chat or in the comments after the fact. I did catch myself in the intro there uh, attempting to enunciate my my words better than I have in the past. Okay. Because if you if you ever have listened to yourself on an audio format or a video, mm-hmm. say you're watching YouTube and you turn it down to half speed, <laughs> <laughs> on purpose or on accident, really, it's totally up to you. Now it's on purpose after we uh, did it the first time. And you listen to yourself speak and you suddenly realize the syllables and letters that you just leave off of yeah. of words or you and just phrases. drift into them lazily. Yeah. And you don't realize yeah. it. Which makes you sound drunk when you slow it down. Yeah. Really drunk. It's really funny. I encourage you guys to try to listen to part of our podcast at half speed. Anytime you see Josh laughing or going red face, uh, it's a really good Mm. half speed moment for you. I'm I'm really disappointed that they don't allow quarter speed. Quarter speed they'll do, but they don't play the audio at quarter speed. Mm, What's the point? Uh, I guess if you're trying to watch the video slow. You sound drunker. I'm just here for the audio part myself, but... Uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Um, it's been another week of stuff that's going on, I guess. We're just going to jump into what's going on here. Uh, PCPer.com slash live. If you are watching us right now, 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 as I say this, and not after the fact as I say this, you're at PCPer.com slash live. Uh, we have a chat room there. We have the live stream of this very podcast uh, that we record it and we broadcast it while we record it. 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on Wednesdays. If uh, you need a little reminder for that, because I know people get really busy. Um, is there NFL? There's no NFL football on Wednesdays, right? So that's just Thursdays. So I don't have to worry about contending with that in the fall. Uh, but if you need a reminder, if you go to pcpro.com slash subscribe, you get this page here. Basically, we ask you for your name, your email address, and uh, I'll send you a notification a couple of hours ahead of time. And if we do any other live streaming events, uh, a week or two ago, we had uh, the AMD software team here. We had a really cool discussion about what their driver stack was like, what their development cycles were like, uh, new features in that driver, and we gave away some hardware. And we usually give away hardware when we do these other types of live streams. But if you sign up for this mailing list, you will know about those beforehand. Usually when it's something irregular, like a not podcast, we try to give you a, a full day's notice on that. So pcpro.com slash subscribe, you can sign up for that mailing list right there. A couple of other things. Obviously, we still have our Patreon campaign running. That is at PC. Nope. That is at patreon.com <laughs> slash PC per. It's like I'm going through a lot of URLs. You could make guys. a you could make a link. So it's PC per com slash Patreon. Um, I, yeah, uh, I, maybe I could. That's true. But we're not. It's patreon.com slash PC per. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get this page here, which allows you to read about why we're doing the Patreon campaign, uh, what the benefits are for us and for you. Uh, this is basically your way to contribute in a recurring monthly format to us directly, whether it be a dollar a month or $3 or five or 10 or 20 or 50. Um, and all that goes straight to us so we can you know, work through the issues. Advertising is very hard. Um, site redesigns, Josh's and bathtubs, all kinds of things go into these discussions. It's very complex, uh, but we greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate anybody who is a patron uh, to our site. Uh, look at that! Way back at podcast episode three eighty one. Where are you? Where were you at there, Jeremy? That's an odd, uh, huh? Like recovering an event. Or I think I was in a hotel. Oh, that was at my brother's place. Uh, oh, okay. That okay. was in a hotel. That was we're my brother's the place. Red, I was doing the it on red, his couch. The red fabric oh. behind it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the so fabric's red. Behind, Jeremy. Yeah, it's Jeremy. Yeah. That is true. It's red. It's a very dark red. Oh. Um, and as always, if you become a new patron or increase your patronage amount during the live stream, I will uh, call you out and thank you on the stream. So thank you guys very much for that. Uh, a couple of other notes we did publish. We're still publishing these PC per mailbags. This is last week. Yeah, yeah, no, we're still making them. That's true. Uh, the fifth one went up. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, whatever, those things uh, where we yeah, answer your no. questions, right? So you put them in the in the 
in the comments of the YouTube video. Uh, we pick out a handful every week to answer and discuss. Uh, people seem to like those so far, so we're gonna we're gonna keep going with that. And uh, Jim is putting in some effort here to kind of make the, the visual style a little bit better than what we had had before, as opposed to just cropping out a piece of screen. But visually, it is just me looking at the camera. So be prepared That's not true. for that. No? I'm, I'm That's true. Sometimes Ken's in the background doing work on things. That's true. And this one, nobody was here. Nobody else was at the office. That's true. I will say, looking at this video, um, there's a lot of icons on that monitor. It should probably be a little bit cleaned up and organized. No. If it's just me. No? All right. All right. There's also a hammer sitting on that table. There's a hammer? Oh, there is a hammer on that table. Uh, I see a solution to your problem, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. That's how we fix the problems. Uh, also, we're doing PC Per Plays, which is just Ken and I's excuse to play uh, games for a couple hours a week. This week, we played StarCraft Remastered, the, re the, the HD remake. Uh, you can tell here we go back and forth between the original and the new one. This is the original, you can tell, because it's still in a 4x3 format. Uh, but as we you can see here, here it is in the 4x3, and there it is in 16x9. Much better textures, better color. Um, it's still a very fun game, and it would be very easy for me to spend significantly more time with this than I have available to spend with games, especially considering like it will run on my on my laptops and stuff too. So uh, worth noting that. So if you want to hang out with us slash watch us play some StarCraft Remastered, uh, head over to the YouTube channel as well. We have those uh, those videos up and running as well. Um, what else is on the list? Uh, pause that. Here we go. Uh, Jeremy, we're this weekend, right, is the 16th. No, I almost said annual. It's not annual. <laughs> <laughs> the 16th uh, PC per VLAN, right? You know it. The frogs will be all together at 10 o'clock in the morning Eastern time on Saturday to uh, start blasting the hell out of each other. <laughs> I've put a link to uh, the forum page where Lenny's got a brief overview of how to join up, how to make sure that uh, you've got a chance to win some of the prizes that they'll be giving away, which some people behind the desk there might know some about, about what they are. True. But uh, there's there were 50 people last time I checked, uh, wow. so it's going to be a big one. That's an awesome graphic. And it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a, uh, that, that image has been around for a long time. Yes, it has. It has been around for a very long time. Uh, so that would be fun. Looking forward to that. Uh, I guess that's all of our pre stuffs. So we want to talk about RX Vega a little bit here. I know, um, you guys discussed it on last week's podcast. I was out of town. Uh, I was in uh, Orlando with my daughter going to Disney World, just the two of us, a lot of fun. So I didn't know if, before we get into the drama that has occurred since the yep. launch of our there, there is drama. As I sit here today, I literally can't believe it's only been a week Well, since. When you were well, testing I mean, it before that. Was it a week and a half? When did, it, when did it actually launch? Thursday? Did it Monday. launch on Thursday? No, it launched last Monday. Yeah. Okay, so it's been... Yeah, eight days, nine days. I mean, it started like a month so earlier when you started much, testing the other cards. And well, stuff. yeah, but I'm saying like so much. It seems like so much stuff has happened around RX Vega in the time since release that, yeah. it, that all this occurred in only nine days. Like from my point of view, it's hard to digest everything and 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 keep up while I was out of town and then over the weekend and uh, trying to get a whole bunch of other stuff done. I'm, I'm trying to imagine like being in AMD shoes as they're trying to react and 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 talk about and kind of message all these different things they need to do. Uh, but before we go into the new stuff, I guess what I was going to ask was, does anybody on the show have any questions or th anything that came up last week that maybe wasn't finalized or had other thoughts on or anything that that I might be able to uh, help with? How much does it cost? Icing. <laughs> That's later. <laughs> We're going to get to that what in you say? Pricing. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That seems to be the thing. So we 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 fundamentally understand where it stands, uh, where both cards, the sixty four and the fifty six, stand in terms of the pricing struct or the performance, performance structure. Well, let's just spell it out for people. Of real it. Quick. The the Radeon uh, the RX Vega sixty four is near equivalent a ten eighty plus mm -hmm. minus a little bit, you know, five percent either direction. Mm -hmm. The RX fifty six, which is not even supposed to be available. Well, actually, it's supposed to be available in about five five days. Um, is Faster than a GTX 1070 by anywhere from 0% to 10, 
right? Yeah. So there's actually there's actually a noticeable difference in uh, performance between the RX Vega 56 and the GTX 1070 from NVIDIA. So they actually have, in theory, quotes, air quotes, in theory. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, the I was going to try to tweet out that we're going to talk about this very specific subject. They might bring some people in. Uh, performance benefits at that specific price point if pricing um, were to remain as a static at, thing. At, at, the, at the number that was provided <laughs> yes. to everybody? So that's yes. kind of what the issue is, right? That like we, we got briefed on here are the prices. And yes, the pricing thing was a little bit confusing because you had these packs that were $100 extra, you know, but you would get packaged with, you know, uh, discount codes or whatnot or whatever coupon codes or whatever they're calling yes. them for some games and some hardware. And then there was even more added confusion there because then Newegg started to want to bundle them together. So that was Newegg's form of a pack was to actually get the monitor with to, to kind of force it all as one purchase. Yeah, and and even making that worse was, you know... Actually, that, I'm curious if they're still doing that because... That Samsung monitor they were bundling was like just a really bad example of a FreeSync panel. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't I don't have one myself, but seeing what Steve at, at Gamers Nexus has been able to demonstrate with that particular uh, display. Yeah. Now, I will say he didn't... Can you correct me if I'm wrong here? He didn't see those problems with that monitor with the Vega card that he had. He had a uh, Vega 56, not a 64. Yeah. I, I think they all did the flickering somewhat, at least on the loading screens. No. No? I, don't, I think he said he didn't see flickering on Vega 56. Huh. I saw it on Vega FE. Well, there, there were definitely there were definitely some issues more on the screen side that applied to like it didn't matter what card. Well, that's part of why it's strange is that he didn't see issues on Vega Fifty Six and he did on the Five Eighty. I'm gonna bring up know. Newegg here just so we're all on the same page while we start this discussion. So as I look at Newegg today, yeah, you can actually get Vega Sixty Fours on Newegg with the games for six eighty nine available that's, that's to the add. bundle. Yes. Which was supposed to be how much what, at the day? Five ninety nine. Okay, so... So they're $90 over what we expected them to be at. All right. Okay. Do they have any in stock of just the card? Uh, I, I mean, no. Doesn't look like it. No, 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 uh, no, out of stock. Yeah. Uh, and that one was seven nineteen. You know, the water cooled was supposed to be six ninety nine. That's seven ninety nine. Um, so I don't everything, know if they have a everything is pretty much 90 or or $100 higher. Than it should have been. Wow, well, there's a lot of the problem is when when Newegg does these these bundles like this, there's literally a thousand it's different like every possible SKUs combination that show of, up. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, so part of this problem, and maybe part of the reason that everything is a hundred dollars more expensive mm -hmm. now, is because of this rebate thing. Not customer rebates, right? Yeah. But rebates, well, at least part of it is probably due to that. So the here over the last week, what has happened is somebody, uh, Josh, you can remind me who it was, a a reseller slash website talked about, oh, these prices are never going to be at four ninety nine again because AMD has expired these rebates that they were giving re, uh, uh, board vendors yeah. in order to enable the four ninety nine price and was only going to be at launch period in order to get positive reviews and get positive positioning in these reviews. So, in, so in other words, never, it would never return to that, right? That was the problem. So say that say that would mean that theoretically, like just to make up some numbers, right? So the AMD was probably charging the vendors like $550, like their their cost or no, something. No, no, well, hold on. So what they, what they do is everybody gets margin along the line. AMD sure. gets a margin, the add-in card vendors get a margin, the res the channel guys get a margin, and then the resellers get a margin. Right? right. So if AMD sells a part to Sapphire for $350, then Sapphire wants to make 50 bucks, Newegg wants to make 50 bucks, mm -hmm. now your price is 499 Right. Okay. Um, however, if... We don't know what that starting amount is. That's, AMD's that's not going to tell us. Resellers aren't going to tell us. That's all super. And, and that, that starting amount would have had to have been higher than that, than the example you just did, because without the rebate, they can't conceivably sell the card at the, the cost that AMD. Here, here's, here's the secret behind all this. Prices don't matter, because at the end of the day, AMD and NVIDIA can't control end pricing, but they can absolutely control... Uh, what they want the prices to be, 
right? So when, when a company, when NVIDIA decides to drop a price on a GPU, when they wanted to make the GTX 1080 399, I'm sorry, 499 instead of 599, for example, okay. right? There were already tens of thousands of cards in the channel. Yep. They didn't just like say tough luck you have to sell those for 699 and or lose money on them they would do a they rebate. went to these guys and said okay for every one of these you sell you know maybe we're giving you 75 and you're going to eat 25 this yeah. is how we're going to do this yeah right and that will be a rebate uh yeah and it i mean call it whatever you want it could be in, in money terms, that comes back to them in some other way it's a discount off yeah i'm just, I'm just trying to match the term else. that this other you know supplier used yeah in you yeah. know yeah. in this amd thing right right so so when when that when that reseller came out and and said that it was a very damaging message, and I feel like we're getting about to be road bombed here. Must my, be a 747 taking 747. off. Yeah, I'm looking it up. Okay, <laughs> uh, that's really loud. Yes, that's the loudest thing I've ever heard here. Okay, that's pretty serious. Uh, well, if this is the end, guys, it's been a fantastic Sorry. show. Now you know nice. how we stand on RX Vega. Um, <laughs> it's AMD. They're going to firebomb us for talking. Uh, <laughs> I forgot where I was at now. Oh, when, when, when that reseller said that, it was, it was really damaging because now not only was it you know an attack on AMD kind of, but it was also kind of releasing the hounds on this idea of how, who controls pricing and why. At the end of the day, AMD can't force Sapphire or Newegg to sell their cards at a certain price yeah. because they're not AMD's products. AMD sells them to Sapphire. Sapphire then sells them through Newegg or to Newegg, depending on how you look at it, right? And so there's legalities in terms of they're not allowed to control the price. So if Newegg wants to sell these Power Color and these Sapphire cards for $6.99, there's really nothing AMD can do about it unless they go in and say, hey, we're going to pay you $190 to discount your cards back to 499. Mm -hmm. That's essentially what they would have to do. So you'll get this money, but it's conditional. You have to have sold the card for this amount. Right. But yeah. if you're AMD, you're already on a super razor thin margin if you're not already losing money on this product to go in and now rebate and try to coerce these guys down again right. is really like an impossible task mm -hmm. for them. Um, the My understanding of things from talking with a lot of different people is that AMD did not artificially set like a first week price intentionally. Um, now that being said, I've heard that basically the uh, the way they worked around this is they're going. They were planning to maintain the four ninety nine price tag for some subset of product, right? Some allotment of product, but not all of it. Meaning that it would expire at some point. Or to, or they would the the quantity would expire. Like, hey, we're gonna let you sell sure. five thousand cards at four ninety nine. Like, we're gonna pay you to keep at least five thousand four ninety nine. But the other right. twenty five thousand, we're we're not matching that. And so right. now market conditions will apply. So where that comes into an issue with how the cards were announced and how the pricing was announced is nothing. There was no caveat. There was no little no, asterisk. You're right. You're right. Like, it, it, there's no reason that anybody would think that that price wouldn't be the price. At least the MSRP. Also right. keep in mind, in AMD's defense, they're coming in in an incredibly volatile market. Yeah, where and you have mining going on and all this GPU stuff. prices are all over the place. Yeah. Um, you know, AMD was very critical of the fact that the day of the RX 5664 review NDA, you could buy GTX 1070s for stock prices, but now you can't. Right, like so, basically saying like they did the exact same thing that that we did, uh, and nobody's criticizing them for it. Or, or the same thing happened to their cards that happened to our cards, and nobody's criticizing them. Right, as I look at GTX 1070s on, still on the uh, high end uh, on Newegg.com today, you know you can get no, that's view details, view details. Where's the price? Four fifty nine. That's open box. Uh, four seven. No, four seven nine's back order. No. Holy moly. Okay, 529. No, that's refurb. <laughs> Guys, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> GTX 1070s are expensive still, right? So 1070 uh, on uh, Amazon 473. Like actual from Amazon? Uh, EBJ. But it's uh, sold by Amazon, not like resale, whatever. Oh, it's, the the, the point is is that prices are still very all over the place. Yeah. Um and so 
it's it's hard to really be critical of AMD, but I, I totally understand people not wanting to buy the cards for the elevated prices. Like that's what you should do. You should yeah. not purchase these cards at elevated prices that they're not warranted by. Right. But I say the same thing about the GTX 1080, 1070, 1080 Ti. If you're a gamer, don't spend seven hundred ninety nine dollars on a GTX 1080 mm -hmm. because it's not worth that. Right. Like, um, yeah, it's 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 kind of a mess. I don't know, Josh. Do you have any thoughts on this on the on the pricing availability stuff? Well, yeah, the 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 entire thing is kind of cloudy because we've got the mining issue, and so what would demand be and what would prices be if there wasn't this kind of mining thing that has exacerbated pricing uh, pretty much across the board? Um, we don't know anything about AMD's. Uh, supply of these products we yeah. don't know how many are in the wild some people have said well there's only 1600 or 1200 at launch i find that kind of so not b accurate b before but before you go any further than that i will say that my communications have indicated that there were like maybe only a thousand on launch day wow uh but the there had been let's say tens of thousands of them let's somewhere around 15k that were supposed to be ready that day but got held up by something and that they were going to be just a few days away which in, oh, okay. in my book would have been here by now and looking at new egg it doesn't appear that it's here now yeah um that sounds like an excuse it, it is a little bit of an excuse especially when they came out and uh, at that tech event and said the reason they had been delaying was to build up enough stock that this didn't occur anyway go ahead josh yeah i think uh in terms of them actually supplying product, it's been a disappointment with the volatility of the price and uh, this whole $100 combo thing. Um, I think it's it's made a lot of users kind of angry, people who were excited about this. I had a friend of mine who texted me uh, that new egg thing of, of, I think, you know, a single one was $789 or 712 or somewhere in there, yeah. you know, and asking what the hell was this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you know, unlike, you know, uh, Ryzen, at least you had plenty of product. You just didn't have any motherboards. This is, you've got no product and incredibly high prices for what you can find. And what you can find is minimal. And, um, it kind of uh, tells you where AMD has been focusing as of late. Um, I think, that, you know, they, they've wanted to get their CPU guys back up off, off the ground, able to be a, a prime uh, revenue builder for the company. And, you know, I, I think that the GPU guys kind of got pushed to the back while they were working again on, on their foundation products. And, um, you know... The GPU guys have been under the gun for yep. the past year, trying to get something out that is competitive with NVIDIA at the 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti level, and they just they just don't have the product. And I think that the jump to HPM2 has been fraught with danger for many reasons. Um, That's actually in it our seems list like they the probably would have been better off if they had just done gddr5 or the first iteration of vega and maybe work some of the kinks out and gone to hbm2 later well, on this year yeah I no mean, i don't i don't disagree it's all with you. crystal ball stuff Espe and it's you know hindsight 2020 yeah and and if they were only doing this product that that line of thinking makes sense too if you if, if you're only worried about like a, a full-size gaming card hbm2 is not a necessary um, uh, uh, technology. I will point out, people in the chat have commented out like, hey, there's 22 SKUs on Newegg with bundles attached to them. Yeah. Of water-cooled, limited edition, standard cards. So how many of these are being just kept back by Newegg in hopes that somebody buys them with all these other parts? And also, they're still calling them Radeon packs, which is, uh, based on my conversations with AMD, not accurate. Yeah, Like, these not should the not be called Radeon packs. Um so I, I don't know what the what the shift is there. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Josh. I don't. There's just a whole bunch of. This is a company that needed something to go really well. Right. The CPU stuff's been going well. The CPU stuff's been going excellent. Yeah. Um, and and here's here's another thing. I mean, the first month was pretty rough for him. 
and Ryzen. Sure. And that was, yes. you know, motherboards. But it but was after more, that, it was more of like technical issues. Yeah. That was that was teething issues. As on opposed like, to like, hey, you just can't buy any or it's all overpriced. Right. Um there is one thing worth pointing out. Like there there had been rumors and discussion that AMD was actively losing money on every RX Vega card being sold. Right? Like they were taking a loss every time they sold a card. I don't think they can afford to do that. Well, I mean Intel can afford to do that. Nobody can afford to do it over a long term, but but so say it, say that's the case. Wouldn't you maybe try to sell as few of them as possible? Uh, yeah. Right. Like if you if you're losing a hundred dollars every time you sell something, yeah. you can't not sell it because of how bad it would look that you didn't sell it. You need to be competitive in that space. You need yeah. to have mind share. You need to be have fans. You need to have yep. a, a product you, out you there. Get, you get credit for launching the product, but right. nobody but can it, buy it. But if you sell. 100,000 of them, you're losing 100 bucks on each. If you sell 10,000 of them, yeah. you're losing 100 bucks on each. Yeah. Now, you know, you start to get into some interesting ideas about why things may be happening the way they are. Um, if that actually is the case, and I don't and I don't really know if that's the case. Uh, we also had the issue crop up of the different die packages. Um, let me see if I can I can find that story. That was a Tom's hardware More story. More like the right? different methods of die packaging. Yes, sorry. Yes. What yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, all the same memory packages oh and uh, GPU oh packages, but just uh, different, I guess. Holy crap, could I get one more ad on this Tom's? Oh, my Jesus. Yeah, Tom's has gotten pretty bad. <laughs> Two pop-ups before I could get to this. You won't believe too. how many ads are on this page. <sighs> uh, so that aside, um, oh, there's an ad. Jesus yeah, Christ. yeah, I like the videos they put in line that makes it it's from totally different content and it yeah. looks like it's a video that was meant to be for yeah. the it's like some dude streaming a game or something. So apparently there are these uh, are being constructed in different locations, uh, Taiwan and Korea. Is that right? I think so. Yeah, it's it's Hynix versus Samsung. Hynix isn't making HBM memory yet. That's the thing. They Hynix isn't making HBM two. They don't yeah. have memory. to be to be able to, to be packaging. It. True, it would still be surprising me if they're doing that with Samsung IC. Yeah, right. Maybe they are. I don't know. Uh, but like this slide that was apparently presented to add-in board vendors shows the differences. That there's an unmolded and a molded package. Somebody's got to figure out what plane is going to destroy I, us. There's there's nothing over. Is there a UFO hovering over our our church building or I, something? I think UFOs might be quieter than that. We're going to be smited. <laughs> you want to be smote? Uh, so there's an unmolded and a molded package that... Do you, do you guys have a racetrack next to you? No. No, no. That's, that's clearly bad, coming from the know, airport. And it seems like a, like a jet is like holding its brakes, ramping. putting full throttle, and then pulling it back. I don't think we're that They're close to the testing. airport that that's going to... We're pretty close. Um, the slowly no, closing it's, it's spiral that, pattern. It's that NASCAR jet, jet truck that's cleaning <laughs> off the track, except they're cleaning off the road in front of your place. Again. What yeah. the heck is that? I don't understand. Um, it's getting closer. So yeah. the packaging is different in that there is uh, there's molding around the different packages, but also in one of them, in the unmolded, the GPU die and HBM are different heights. There's a 40 uh, micrometer, 40 yeah. micrometers micrometer. difference in height of the HBM and the GPU die. Like, which, what, what the hell? Which honestly, in terms You're of- You're gonna have a different cooler. For each of those. No, but here's or you the can thing. add thermal pads. It, well, what I don't understand is in terms of like <laughs> thermal blows. compound, 40 micrometers only to the memory. It's not like the memory is putting out so much heat that you're, you know, you absolutely need the perfect thermal interface. Sure. For the memory, right? You need the GPU. You, sure. You need it, right? Yeah. But like, you know, so I just don't understand why there's that big of a... First of all, there should be a difference in freaking. But also, there's there's the potential to be not level. Yeah, there's the potential for the for the heat right. Tank so to now, if the level. heat sink is not making the best contact with the GPU die, yeah, because of that, that's another potential problem. Yeah, that's that's where the problem comes in. I just I don't I don't know. So this is one of the molded ones you can see here. It's got kind of like this grayish thing. We have well, that's a what die we, that's sitting what we right there for the review. Oh, that's the one we have there. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's the one. There's you one right there on that on that thing, but I mean, it's, uh, it's, let me see it's kind of a is. dead one. And then this is one, uh, a third variant apparently for the RX Vega oh, no. 56. This is unmolded. So yeah, this one is completely unmolded. Yeah. And as I look at it, 
there you is clearly tell. a height difference in those yeah. two products. You're not be able to see that even with our fancy new camera, um, but there's clear that's clearly the case. So if you take this and you put it on something flat, it's gonna rock back and it forth. Definitely rocks. Yeah. It's yeah, not great. So it's not great. That's not so a good I mean, idea. even in, you know, they talk about a difference in ASIC height and uh, uh, how to uh, adjust for that. Single thermal solution designed to accommodate heat difference requires evaluation of its impact to ASIC pressure. Oh man, nominal height difference yeah. is around 0.10 millimeters. So yeah. you know, I don't know if this adds any of the drama to it. It's just added drama. To the whole to the whole story of, of what it is i don't know you know if this is a cost saving measure is this a um they're not using different memory yet they haven't they've spun up uh hynix yet uh i don't know why they're diving into that maybe they're different ic's but um oh look here's more ads about why no doc why doctors in the no no longer prescribed metformin and stuff um any thoughts on this, Josh, or Alan, or anybody about like what difference it makes that this packaging is different and if we should care? Just adds confusion to their whole like supply chain and like production chain, right? Like now you have if you especially if you're a board partner getting yeah, boards, they, I assume they're they telling board, you hmm. which ones you're gonna get. Yeah, so these guys had have, have to now experiment with different ways of mounting the heatsink to oh now we got this other batch in and they're this other kind. Yeah, right. So it's potentially it's like, and so what XP, SPC or and them are going to have to have three different SKUs for Threadripper coolers? I mean, probably not, but people are going to complain. Right. Yeah. Is that one, one, like a tenth of a millimeter, it's, it's for thread. It'll be filled with Tim, right? <laughs> it, but at the same time, it's a little bit unbalanced. So the heavy handed among us could well do a little bit of damage to what seems to be a fairly fragile chip. It's, it was a bad idea, even if they saved a lot of money with it. It's just adding confusion where the, you do not want any confusion whatsoever. It'll, you don't want something that people can nit, nitpick about. It'll also add a lot of confusion for anybody trying to water cool their GPU. Yeah. If they're into that, mm. you can't just buy the water cooler and slap it on there now. Now you have to pop your heatsink off, see which one you have, and then potentially do some kind of different procedure, you know. I mean, someone could probably oh, make, somebody could probably something. make like a really thin shim or something that's just you put a layer of thermal compound on either side of to bridge that gap Perfect. or something like Shims that. Shims again. It just you know something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Monkey doing something to a football. That's that's the only impression that I get from this yeah. launch. Just adding uh, a head. And then the other thing I had on the on our bulleted list here was all the people now discovering that the that the V BIOS is locked. On these cards, oh, yeah. uh, that you can't can't do. People can't do the same types of mods to the BIOS that they have done before. Um, AMD hasn't come out with like an official message on it. My indication is that the messaging is is around um, some kind of like Microsoft Secure Boot requirement, which just sounds like horseshit. Well, oh, it sounds Jesus. it sounds odd because Nvidia sells graphics cards and they <laughs> uh -huh. don't have the same kind of lock in place. Yeah. Now the the Vega G, the Vega GPU has a uh, an ARM based security coprocessor embedded in it, just For like the Ryzen processors. Okay. Um, so there may be some complication with that, right? So what is that thing for? I don't know. Um, <laughs> it I, I just think, seems weird. Honestly, I think for the consumer space, it's probably nothing. But as you get okay. into enterprise level, yeah, maybe I think it's part of TPM. Oh. So if you want right. to build something that is completely and fully uh, TPM, okay. even the graphics cards need a, a little bit of a something in there just to make sure that it can't be changed without alerting everyone in their system. Right. right, but this is a consumer card. Yeah. I, and sure, that's why you don't even spend the money to put it in there. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's already in the die, so it's whatever. It is what it is. Um, so yeah, so people who were used to updating vBiases, people who were thinking about, hey, can we move the vBIOS from the liquid-cooled card over to the air-cooled card and see if it will change our parameters for stuff. Or heck, even change your like built-in fan curve or something on the card if you wanted to just change yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, you That's can still do some of that in software. The software's kind of buggy, so again, it leans back to the fact why people would do that right. at that level. But There have been some editing of what's called the power play tables, which is apparently something that you can still get to within Windows. It's kind of like a, maybe like a registry level thing, I believe. Yeah. Huh. So people have been like increasing power targets and stuff like that. So there's still some work that can be done. Okay. 
All right. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with Vega, everybody. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll just check in next week and see. Right? I don't even know. Like, you know, it's it's. It, have you ever watched uh, gym class for little kids? Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, probably. and they're playing dodgeball, right? Yeah. And there's the one kid in the corner that's chasing after a ball, right? He reaches down to get the ball, and he's almost got it. But then he takes another step, and he kicks it out ahead of him. And so he, he chases it some more, and he tries to grab it. But his feet don't know what his hands are doing, and he, he kicks the ball again. And he just chases it around. And you get so frustrated watching it. This is where we're at. Yeah. yeah. Ken, did you figure out what that is? I cannot figure out what it is. I went out and I heard That's the noise and I looked up and there was nothing in the air. It's a bit cloudy. It's coming oh, from it's over there, right? Yeah. yeah. The only yeah, thing I can think of is that it's GE testing engines, but that's pretty far away from yeah, me. Yeah, that's, that's a it's little not bit further exactly than close. the runways of the airport. Yeah. Too. Sorry if, the airport. Go, if you can't hear it on the stream. It's pretty. It's, it's, it's really. Loudest it's like shaking the building I've loud. Heard here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, All right, before we get into our next stories, I do want to mention that Edsel Malisig edited his pledge from $3 to $5 at uh, patreon.com slash pcper. So thank you very much for that, Edsel. Uh, All right, let's try to run through some other things. First up, 8th generation core processors are coming soon from Intel. Uh, But maybe not how you thought they were going to be. So it, it... it's not uncommon for Intel to say announce the 15 watt generation, the 15 watt part of these uh, of a new generation. Um, it's a pretty cool idea. They're actually moving the uh, 15 watt parts to be true quad core with hyper threading mm-hmm. and core i7 and i5 designation. So if you look on at this table parts. on mobile parts, 15 watt parts that would be in this like you know laptop, yeah, will have quad core. Configurations in them. Right now, we're all limited to even the Core i7s are dual core hyper threaded. Yep. Uh, with the move to the eighth gen, it's going to be quad core hyper threaded. You're going to have these huge gaps in base clock and boost clock. If you look at the this table, right? So, like the flagship part has a base clock of only 1.9, but a max turbo of 4.2 gigahertz. That is incredible for a laptop. Part. It's huge. Well, so the 4.2 is not that much higher than where we're at with some of the Core i7 parts today. Oh, yeah, I know. Right. And, and keep in mind that max turbo will only be when like one core, yeah, one thread is limited. really running, yeah. right? And the reason the base clock has dropped, if you look at last generation's base clocks were 2.8 and 2.7, and we're dropping almost a whole a, a full they, gigahertz. They had half the number of cores though. Right. Yeah. And so now the base clock is what, you know, at a 15 watt TDP with that type of thermal solution, you'll be able to run all four cores at 1.9 for a sustained period of time. Yep. Now in reality, what I expect from these machines is that your clock will be somewhere in between that closer to the three plus side the majority of the time it'll probably do i mean it's not in this table but they're still going to have like don't they have like a couple of layers worth of the the turbo now where it's like if it's two cores that are maxed then you get some sure kind of in yes between. there's like different steps yeah. uh, of what the frequency will be i haven't gotten those spe- specific tables yet and it may be that with this generation i would expect and i would hope intel is going to work with their partners and be a little bit more um, flexible in that regard. Yeah. Like if you if you have a little bit better cooling solution, you should be able to sustain higher clocks for a lo- longer period of time. Yeah. Right. So the whole idea here is not that you're going to use a 15 watt TDP processor in a laptop for your full time editing machine because now it's got quad core. Mm-hmm. Right. Think of it more as for people who are using ultra thins, thin and lights, two in ones, like this, like the Surface Pro or whatever. Uh, when you do bursty multi-threaded workloads, yeah, they will happen quicker, right? And for single-threaded workloads, you still have these really high max turbo clocks. You know, DDR4 memory speed's a little bit higher, cache speed a little bit higher, the UHD graphics instead of HD graphics, no performance changes, however. Uh, prices are um, higher, about, uh, about 20 bucks higher than the other ones. But obviously, pricing when you get into OEM sales like this are, is, is very... Um, determined on other arrangements and deals they may have. Now, what is interesting about this is that these are still Cabby Lake processors. Mm -hmm. They're calling them Cabby Lake R or Cabby Lake Refresh. So the eighth generation is starting with Cabby Lake Refresh parts. That being said, they did come out and publicly say that eighth generation will span Cabby Lake, Coffee Lake, and Cannon Lake 
and which is not confusing at all. No, right. not at all. And eighth generation no. will span fourteen nanometer parts and ten nanometer parts. So this is the first time. It, like so now usually, the, the TikTok talk is all freaking overlap it's, now. It's totally screwed, oh, yeah. right? Because at, at first, up till the seventh gen, you could you had reasonable uh, assumptions of architecture, yep. feature set. Um, you know, IPC levels, all that type of stuff. So the seventh gen we knew was Kaby Lake, was all 14 nanometer plus, et cetera, et cetera. Sixth gen was Skylake. Uh, with eighth, they're going, they're, they're, they're calling it like, I don't know, some BS term, like customer centric generation markings or something like that, where they're focused on each generation will indicate some relative performance metric or some mm -hmm. crap that doesn't make any sense, right? And in reality, why the they're doing and went straight to a Charleston, right? Yeah, basically, what they're doing is they want to have the best part at every segment of the market. Mm -hmm. They want to have the the best low power part. They want to have the best high performance part. They want to have the best uh, mainstream consumer desktop part. Uh, and in their current lineup, those exist across different architectures and different process technologies as we get into 2018. So rather than create eighth, ninth, tenth generations all kind of running simultaneously. They went, ah, oh, screw it, eighth generation, and then it'll just kind of arbitrarily designate a ninth generation would be my guess. Um, hmm. So expect Cavi Lake refresh to be the 15-watt parts. Uh, when we get our consumer desktop parts, those are going to be Coffee Lake at the six-core, 12-thread processors. Mm -hmm. um, I think when we get into... Which is also, they're also supposed to drop down to more like a, isn't it supposed to be like... The 7700K replacement is going to be like a six core. Right. That's, yeah, the yeah. 8700K, whatever it's going to be called, is supposedly going to be a six core part. Yeah. That's going to be a Coffee Lake architecture. So a slight change modification there. And then Cannon Lake is Coffee Lake moved to 10 nanometer. Right. Mm. So uh, I think you'll see a very quick, uh, uh, like aggressive move forward on a bunch of these areas as Intel now has to deal with competition from Ryzen, competition from Threadripper, competition from, you know, like say Qualcomm entering into the thin and light notebook market with Snapdragon on Windows 10. Uh, there's a bunch of areas where they're kind of like scrambling to catch up and they're, and Intel's now going to go with, okay, all these technologies that we have kind of been slowly doling out because we have all these leads in these different areas, right? And no competition from AMD or what have you. Uh, like, okay, turn on the faucets, let's get these products out here. And so anybody who was sleeping on Intel as as like somebody who didn't have the technology to compete is going to be sorely disappointed. They have the technology to compete. Yeah. They just needed the they competition. Had, they had no reason to turn on the faucet. To, to, to do it, right. Yeah. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see uh, where that turns. Uh, we don't have Sebastian on here or Jim to talk about their respective reviews. So we can kind of just breeze through these as we uh, approach the first hour of the podcast already. Uh, the ECS Leva Z Plus Intel Cabby Lake Mini PC. Um, the the Nook. It's, it's like a Nook. The Nook form factor continues. Uh, this the, time... Well, the Nooks, as of late, Cabby have Lake. gotten thicker. And this one, this one is back to yeah. like the original Nook. I think it's a little bit um, bigger Wider? footprint. Maybe a little bit, because the number I of think, ports across the front of it is, there's a decent number of ports on there, so. Uh, but these are using Cavi Lake parts, Core i5, up to a Core i5-7300U, so dual-core hyper-threaded processors, uh, like we were just talking about um, from the from the previous gen. Storage support, they have an M.2, uh, but no, like, SATA ports, necessarily. They have an M.2 port that can work in either SATA or PCIe. Two gigabit LAN, you've got lots of USB 3.1 ports, three of them. Um, and a USB 3.0 Type C port as well, HDMI, Mini Display port. It's a pretty. I mean, it's it's not a fantastic looking device, but it is a a like two networking ports on that is kind of an interesting shift. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you go to the second page, you can see Sebastian takes it apart, looks at the internals. You can see the the memory configuration, the processor config, the active cooling. So that's the M dot. It's a short. It M. is. It is a 2280, I no, think. No, that's 2242 or something, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it yeah, I guess it's as short as... It, I guess that's pretty short. It's really short. Yeah, and there's no other uh, M.2 on the other side. So no room for... Because of the size difference, no room for like a two and a half inch drive or anything like that to add with it. So that is a little bit restrictive. Uh, and if you look through the performance benchmarks, you know, this is a, the, the Leva Z Plus is an upgrade over the previous generation ECS devices by a significant margin, really. 
look at like the Geekbench single and multi-threaded results there, um, and Cinebench R15. So some 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 good improvements there. Still, obviously, uh, a little bit slower than the highest end Nook that we had tested thus far, the Core i7 6700HQ, which was a quad-core hyper-threaded part. Uh, the Cabby Lake one still has some some impressive results storage-wise. Um, what did they have? It was 128 gig SSD was included. It's a SATA base, 550 by 206 on its storage perf. So, uh, a pretty good overall device. It did get a gold award from Sebastian. If you're looking for a super small form factor, Nook style, Puck style. Yep, that is a M.2 2242. 2242. Confirmed it. Okay. Which I don't think you're really going to find any M.2 PCIe. Yeah, devices and that's probably not form factor. the SATA ones you'll find because it's basically a variation on uh, M SATA. Gotcha. Um, so it's not hard to make a product work in that form factor, but that's yeah, you're really limiting your storage choices, and which is a shame because it looks like there's almost enough length. Like if you look at that picture, it looks like if you you wouldn't have to change a lot to fit a 2280 in there. Yeah, there's a chip in the way of another post, but it's it feels then, like you, you know, can move it. Yeah, I, like, don't I don't know. I don't know. Uh, check out that review uh, that Sebastian put up. And then also we want to briefly talk about Jim's uh, article on the Acer Predator Z271T. Uh, this is a 144 hertz? I think so. Uh, 144 yeah. hertz, 1080p, VA, G-Sync panel. 27 inch. 27 inch. But what is particularly interesting about this is that it has Tobii eye tracking. T-O-B-I-I. Mm -hmm. well, there's a couple of interesting things. One is it's a very sharp radius curve. Uh, meaning it's it's a, sh uh, a, a very curved, a lot of curve to it it's in a more, short distance, more curve than you might be used to seeing on a curved television, or you know, okay. Um, I think it's a eighteen hundred R. Yes, it, it feels eighteen hundred R. Just looking at it, it seems like it's even you know a sharper radius than that, which would be a lower number. I mean, do you think? But the Toby module on the bottom adds to that uh, effect or something? Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But Basically, it's 27-inch panel with that uh, 1800R curve. If you're sitting at it at just a regular eye viewing distance, it's very close to like, you know, your typical curve panels. If you look at either far edge, mm -hmm. it's not, uh, you know, your eye, the beam of your eye to it is not perpendicular okay. to the panel, right? It's like a shallower radius than you would really need for it to kind of wrap around you, right? This panel is very much like the edge is directly perpendicular to your eye looking at it, mm. like as you look across it. So it really does mm. kind of, you get okay. the full like, you know, envelop kind of effect, right? Um, so in that respect, that's cool. Also, uh, a nitpicky thing I always have about monitors, which you've heard me complain about a lot, is on widescreen, like ul like ultra wides and that are curved, especially like the, the backlight uh, diffuser will be like a few millimeters back behind the mm -hmm, matrix of the mm -hmm. screen. So if you're looking at it off angle, there's like this parallax effect and you actually, the backlight doesn't extend all the way to the to the edge of the, the display, right? So you gotcha. miss a couple of rows worth of pixels depending on what angle you look at the screen. The screen does not do that. The screen, somehow the backlight is a different kind of technology. It's basically one with the yeah. LCD. Um, so you don't get any weird kind of funky, it looks just like a flat panel in that respect. Okay. That doesn't have that, that issue, right? If you look at this picture, you can see the Toby eye tracking module on the bottom of it. Uh, we talked about this before. I, I demoed it at CES yep. uh, on an MSI laptop. Yeah, we had a video about that from CES, yeah, I think. And, yeah, and I'll let you recount it because you you read his, his story most recently. Um, now, I, all those same things I we was, saw at CES, the same kind of effects, right? It, it can track what you're looking at on the screen. And what right. it really boils down to is what games will take what kind of advantage of that right. capability, right? Um, and Jim kind of had some, you know, he was doing like some uh, Euro truck simulator game he was playing, which I really wish I was here to witness <laughs> Jim trying to do a Euro truck simulator. Sure. I would have been giving yeah. him a ration of crap. Um, uh, no, they're great. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and he said, you know, in that game, it was actually using your eye position to like track and make the camera pan. Like right. as if you were looking in different parts of the truck. Mm -hmm. And he said he like crashed the truck because he went to look down at the, G to glance down at the GPS and it put the GPS center screen. And now he did not have where he was looking. Like he couldn't see where he was going. Interesting. Right. Because okay. his the screen shifted its pan, it pan yeah. down to the GPS, right? Yeah. And you no longer see the road. So in that respect, like that game maybe didn't take the best advantage of it. There were other games 
that did like they would uh, take like HUD elements on the screen and they would kind of like dim them out when you weren't actually right. looking at them. Right. So you were just looking at the scene yeah. without stuff in your way. Right. And then when you went to glance down at your HUD, then the HUD would like, you know, intensify or, it's, it's, or whatever. So effects like that are cool. The depth of field one was the one you saw at, yeah. at CES where the I saw that and I also saw like the uh, aperture change like when you looked in the dark area of the screen yeah and it would scene, change it would change it your, would it would it would brighten that up and everything else would kind of over yeah. uh like be either, overexposed, either over, overexposed and go back and just like i mean emu trying to emulate what what happens in real life yeah. if you're like what your eye would section. do when looking yeah. at those different scenes right so it's um, a really cool idea yeah so when it comes right down to it so there, so it's kind of like hit and miss right and it's like some games t it's a cool thing some games it's kind of a gimmicky thing sure uh and that's a lot of games it doesn't do anything because it's that hasn't been implemented. Right. Right. Um, they have a, I think there's a piece of software, I forget the name of it, that you install. There's like a link on the, on, like if there's a sticker I mean, on the monitor. You have to install that, like a Toby eye tracking driver. Well, there's that. It attaches but then to your machine on USB. There, there's also a thing that kind of points you to like, here's the set of games that will actually use oh, the Toby okay. eye tracking. And yeah, kind it of tells like, you if you need to like enable special options in the game. It's oh, actually okay. a really yeah. well done piece of software. Yeah, okay. they try to make it easy and painless to know, okay, what, what can How I use? How do I get this I want to use this thing with some right. games. What can Toby I do? Toby Game right? Hub. Yeah. Yep. Um, the, uh, we did color calibration on the panel. You know, the colors weren't great out of the box, but it calibrated you know, pretty Pretty sure. almost all almost perfect. Like the red was a little bit off, but um you know, I mean decent panel. He did have uh I mean worth mentioning, although it's a sample sample of one, <laughs> is that uh after a few days of use, uh our particular module just like stopped working on him, the Toby module. Yeah. Um we haven't yeah. heard a lot of people complaining about that kind of thing, so I'd imagine it's a pretty localized, you know, thing, but just I guess worth noting, like we had one. It just broke on us. Who it knows? does have Windows Hello support. Windows uh, Hello uh, support. There is that. That's, but, the, that's <laughs> the best feature, to be yeah. honest. I like actually having now using that Logitech webcam on my main machine that yeah, has Windows Hello support is actually pretty nice. You just yeah. you don't even have to hit anything. You just sit down at you it. Just, and just I hit the button to like wake up the screen, oh. and then as soon as it it says looking for you and it looks for me and it just unlocks the machine. That's cool. It's 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 super nice. Uh, what. Oh, the Surface Pro had that as well that I really liked. And we can't fake it by taking the cardboard, Ryan, and just sticking it at your desk, right? I shouldn't, haven't tried it. Shouldn't try it. shouldn't be able to. That's, that's part of the whole idea. But yeah, so we had the reliability issue. Uh, but, I, you know, it's one of those things like I, I don't think it, I don't I wouldn't recommend anybody buy this yet. It's not like super useful, but it yeah. is kind of neat. But it's something that I, I would like to see developed and expanded upon because I feel like it's a it's a it's kind of a great in between of uh, like track IR VR stuff yep. into uh, a into a scenario that people are much more comfortable with. I don't think there's a version of this, if I remember correctly, when this came out. I don't think there was a version of it without Toby that had the same radius and the same everything uh, else. Maybe not. Yeah, like, probably not. Um, which I complained about then, and I'll continue to complain about now because they're still not. I mean, I think it's a cool. Yeah, like a 1080p VA 144 hertz G Sync panel, which would normally be a relatively low cost thing uh, for what it is. However, VA, yeah. the Toby stuff adds cost to it, an unknown so, amount of cost. And, we don't and, know, and in, yeah. in Nvidia and their G Sync stuff, they kind of do that on purpose. They don't like to have directly competing feature yeah. match parts if, yeah. if they can help it. So, well, I don't know a free sync equivalent with like a curve like this and all of those other yeah. like you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of other things. Oh, Sebastian also posted a review of the Corsair Void Pro RGB wireless SE gaming headset. Um, there's a lot of a lot of names here. The Void Pro RGB wireless SE. Those are all important postscripts to the name Corsair Void because there are a lot of different Corsair Void headsets out there. Um, this one got a really good review from Sebastian. He really liked these. They're they're as the name implies. 2.4 gigahertz wireless RGB lighting, uh, surround audio with Dolby headphone 7.1, up to 16 hours of battery life, uh, 50 millimeter neodymium, am I neodymium? Neodymium. Mm -hmm. All right, drivers. Uh, apparently, a very high quality microphone, better than most. Um, Which is surprising because usually the microphones are crap in these headsets. Yeah, we've seen a kind of a trend of that. The Logitech. Oh, six thirty no five thirty threes had ones that had like the cloth to yeah. them. 
uh, had a really really good microphone compared to previous ones, and this one is is apparently but here's uh, the, very similar. Here's the problem with microphones: you can't necessarily just review one of anything and say the microphone's great with these kinds of microphones, because they're literally will be they vary a lot in like manufacturer quality. Oh, really? Yeah, like you'll you'll hmm. get a good one, you get a good bad one, like. Really? You get a bunch of mediocre ones. Yeah. So let's just tell Corsair to send Sebastian 100. And then <laughs> yeah. So, okay, we'll get Corsair, yeah, at least three figures, 100, maybe 200. Try them sets. all. Try them all and yeah. measure Catalog. Uh, recording audio quality. And then we'll make an audio file of him saying the same sentence on all 200 headsets, playing back to back to back to back to back. And uh, Alex will edit it together. And um, we'll mm -hmm. have a really good piece of content there. Ooh, ooh, so we can do double blind testing? Yeah, exactly. All right. Exactly. Uh, another gold award here from, from Sebastian on this. Uh, $129. They're a little bit steep. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you look at kind of like the Logitech 933, 633 wireless headsets, um, they're in that same, that same type of range too. So apparently a really good headset here from, from Corsair. Give, those, give that review a look, if you will. Um, all right, news items. The eighth generation processors are already show up in products. Uh, Ken, what was this one? This was the Acer Nitro, Nitro 5. 5 spin. Yeah, I don't know spin. anything about the Acer family of, of so notebooks. We reviewed the Acer Nitro something rather uh, like a year and a half ago. <laughs> the first, last first generation first. one, we did okay. <laughs> that was like the traditional. Uh, kind of thicker gaming laptop with a quad core CPU in it uh, and a 1050 okay. for like 600 bucks ish. All right. So the Nitro is their gaming line. This is sort of their gaming ultra book, which sounds like a stupid idea until you realize this has now a true quad core CPU with hyper threading in it and a GTX 1050. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good Wait, for the package. Wait, did you say GTX 750? Size. 1050. 1050. 1050. Okay, thank you. Not a 750. Uh, he didn't go back three years ago. So this <laughs> is, I mean, we, we had this debate when we first looked at our, like, external graphics docs, right? Mm -hmm. The process, the, like, this, uh, this ThinkPad Ultrabook that had a dual-core processor was really struggling on the CPU side. Yeah. In terms of, even if you had a discrete external GPU mm -hmm. on the machine. So when we start to see more of these machines with those quad cores, when they're plugged in and you're not worried about battery life and maybe the thermals can spin up a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, that, that'll be an advantage. Yeah, like, I mean, the, it'll be interesting to see what the throttling does with these quad core parts correct. while gaming. They're probably going to run at pretty low clock speeds Yep. under those conditions, but yep. I'm yep. excited. Uh, but hey... The eighth generation parts are already showing up in uh, in systems. Well, uh, announced in, products. Yeah, Intel said they would be shipping like first week of September. Oh. Not necessarily these machines, but that sure, sure. Si machines with the eighth gen uh, 15 watt parts would be shipping. Bring it on. Yeah. Uh, also today, this happened today, Samsung unveiled the Galaxy Note 8 smartphone. Josh, you picking up a couple? Seven. So you're you're going to pick up seven Note 8s? But then they're going to explode. If you have Note 7. Yeah, don't get the Note sure. 7s. And also, apparently, I've been typing it wrong because uh, I think Sebastian made the same joke here. Note 8 is one word. Mm. With, the, with the 8, I don't like that. Like, I think AMD but, but is doing Vega 64 all one word. in oh front God. of it all? What if you put what in front of it? An A in front of that. A Note 8? And Note 8. Uh, eight. I'll see, that would be good <laughs> because the they got the S Pen and yeah. stuff. See, you mm. thought you were making a joke, but now they're really going to do it. Yeah. Uh, this they is a giant phone. can send the phone. checks to uh, Laramie, Wyoming, Kara, Josh, okay. Walrath. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm sure if I just put that on a box, it'll find its way to you. It will. Uh, in the U.S. market, this phone will be using the Snapdragon 835. It's got a 6.3-inch AMOLED 2960 by 1440 resolution display, because why not? Uh, it's a little bit, it's not that much bigger than the Galaxy S8 Plus. Yeah, in um, physical form factor. Yeah, physical form factor. It's taller, and uh, it has squarer edging, which, according to the tweet from Pat Moorhead, said it was felt much easier to hold in your hand on the S8 Plus. Uh, six gigs of memory, 64, 128, and 256 gigs of storage options. Uh, dual rear cameras. You got a wide angle in the telephoto. 3,300 milliamp hour battery. That battery seems smallish to me for the size of the device. Yeah, I don't but, know what's in the S8. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. Shipping with Android 711, uh, you know. Of course. Un- unfortunate because Oreo was just announced last week yes. or this week. It's on my phone. Yeah, it's on your Pixel XL. Um, the screen at the presentation was amazing. Oh, wow. Look this, at that. Uh, it's, it's hard to tell in this picture, which is actually one of the benefits. Like, this is two big screens back here, and then the floor was also a screen. Yeah. And it, it, they were merging it into one thing. Now, depending on the camera they used, the white balance between the two was bad. Or maybe it was the viewing angle was, was setting <laughs> off some of this stuff. What is it that they were like? like they, they were projector mapping on? onto the floor as well as the screens. I, so I it created it like a one screen effect. Oh. I, I don't know if it was projected or if it looked like if on some of the close shots, it actually looked like they had a tile of yeah. actual monitors. Yeah, maybe. With a, yeah. With a, Clear there was a woman in because the person was not casting them. a shadow where the projector would be. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. yeah. So either it was, it was projected really from cool. below nice. magically, or it was, or it was screens. It was neat, uh, and it kind of took away, so it distracted me from, uh, from the actual product itself. Uh, I, I'm excited about. It. There's a whole bunch of new stuff in here. Read uh, Sebastian's write up on it. I, my favorite thing is I, I love the idea of stylus stylus i styluses. Um, I don't use them regularly enough because other reasons um but the idea like they have this thing where if the screen is off and you take the s pen out and you just start writing on the on the off screen the on the locked phone screen mm-hmm. you can just take notes that way and hit a save that's Without how you get a lot the- of crudely drawn dicks on your phone <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just leave yeah. it and your buddy comes out and draws stuff it yeah and just, just little things like that 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 i think actually will work out did well they, they did they some- fix the problem where can you Put the pen in backwards, and it gets stuck <laughs> I don't know if they fixed that. Or I not. didn't see that addressed yet, which actually I'm kind of surprised. I, I would hope videos addressed. about that yet. Oh man! Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, that comes out September fifteenth. Prices ranging a day, I think. Oh as really? Of the, as of when you'll hear this podcast? Just can't. It's like nine hundred and fifty plus dollars. Nine hundred thirty to nine hundred and sixty dollars, depending Jeez. on your mobile operator. That's insane. They're it's, really hedging their nice. bets on the iPhone eight being a thousand bucks, aren't they? Yeah, it will be. Oh, yeah. No doubt. I really want to try this phone, but I don't, don't want to pay 900 some dollars to do it. Hey, Samsung, pay attention. Wink. Uh, and also news, Asus announced yesterday the Zenfone 4. Thank you. Pro, <laughs> selfie, and selfie How long have you been waiting to do that, Alan? Thank you. I don't know anything about these. Um, they need to release the Zenfone 3.99. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, the Zenfone 4 Pro is also powered by Snapdragon 835 in the Adreno 540 GPU. Uh, six gigs of RAM, pair of rear-facing cameras, one optically zoomed, and uh, this, uh, this all sounds familiar. Sounds very, very familiar. And then the Zenfone 4, it has the same Sony main camera. Um, but they don't mention about the, the second lens on that one. That has a Snapdragon 660 in it. So Essentially, Asus has, and they announced the day before the Samsung event, their kind of flagship phones. They have the selfie brand now, which is, um, I assume, has a higher quality front. <laughs> they have the good uh, camera in the camera. front now instead of the back. <laughs> it's two front-facing cameras, I think. Oh. oh. One's a wide angle. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I got no problem with that. Yeah. Good call. They're probably less than $950. I don't know for sure, but that's my guess. We'll probably have one of these in relatively soon too. We talked about, so I, well, Scott's not on here. Scott bought one of the Oculus Rifts with Kinect controllers for five ninety nine, And he did because it was cheaper with than the Vive. Touch controllers. Or with touch controllers. Sorry, what did I say? Connect. Whatever. I mean, that like, Connect is a similar enough thing that... <laughs> Like Microsoft Connect. I was, I was thinking in my mind, C O N N E C T. Yeah. That's the name of their press or their, their developer event. Yeah, event. Oculus Connect. Yeah, yeah, I had to put that on the calendar. Oh. <laughs> uh, so now HTC Vive has dropped to the same price. Mm-hmm. They've said it's a permanent price drop, whereas Oculus kind of, you know, marketed it as like a summer price drop. Yep. But I don't think they'll go back up anymore. Uh, I wonder if this means that they've implemented their um, because there were supposed changes that were going to come to the beacons. The Make them lower cost. Beacons. Yeah, the only one motor in them instead of two motors. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I would can't imagine, imagine that would be a two hundred dollar difference. I'd imagine that's cost. happened by now. Yeah, maybe Probably. that's happened by now. I mean, is this? It's kind of. I'm kind of hesitant to recommend any VR system, right? But if I had to, if I, somebody now that they're both five ninety nine, 
Do we still recommend the Vive over the Rift? I probably would. Bucks and not a lot of software out there. So t- saving two hundred bucks is nice. Sure, no, but now that they're both five ninety nine, they're not. Yeah, they are. No, did the Rift go back up? The Rift is three ninety nine. No, with the touch controller. With yeah, the touch the controller, it's five ninety nine. No, I don't think that's no. It went from seventy nine to five ninety nine. Read the article right there. This is still significantly above the three ninety nine USD price tag during their competitor summer sale. Well, that's, that's not. That's not true. Okay. I think Scott missed. Yeah, that. I don't think that's. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's true. I don't think it went down to four hundred bucks. There's this the thing summer. called the internet. You can look things up. It's amazing. Yep, four hundred bucks. Wow, wow, really? Yep. Three ninety nine Rift Plus <laughs> Touch. All right, fine. I that's it, really I, cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it went. Yeah, okay. Okay. So never mind. There was a point in time where Rift was three ninety nine and Vive was seven ninety nine. Mm-hmm. That was yep. uh, a couple days ago. Until <laughs> like two days ago. <laughs> that was that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. HTC kind of got handed a decision they, they had to make. Yeah, they kind of had to drop wow. the price then. Even now, it's still. It's still a tough recommendation then. Yeah, I would still probably pick the Oculus over that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only thing, the, the, the only thing I would see as the, as the thing that would push you towards the Vive would be if you really wanted room scale over the sitting at I the desk. I think the room scale is what makes VR good. Yeah. Um, I just don't know. Like the the Rift isn't as good at room scale, but I think it's good enough at standing in the location uh, you probably I w- I have. Agree with that. Yeah. That you wouldn't pay two hundred dollars more. I would agree with that. Right. Just make sure you have lots of USB ports. As and and, and worst case, if you did want to go larger room scale, you just make sure you get the third camera you can get two rifts and in controllers for the price of one samsung note 8 <laughs> and still have like a 100 bucks left yeah technology but with the note 8 up, you can man. stick it in that in that little thing and just do make believe i don't VR. know if you can yet i don't know if the gear vr the latest gear vr supports that it I probably think, doesn't i, it I think it does, does. It the they, they're supposed to make the gear vr like agnostic to screen sizes mostly so you didn't have to keep buying mm-hmm. new ones because it's just a display, or mm-hmm. not even a display, just some yeah. sensors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever, moving on. <laughs> Chat's, uh, Chat's asking if they have vibrating controllers for these things yet. The conversation was venturing on porn. Well, ResVR did come out, so but I will say that have the all of the controllers right now, right? vibrate. Yeah, that was going to say, they all vibrate. <laughs> they they all, all, of course, they all vibrate. <laughs> they all have rumble packs in them from the Nintendo 64. Yes, exactly. Uh, Linksys announces the WRT32X gaming router with killer networking integrated. Uh, this was already an expensive router. Oh, this already existed? This well the before, blue version the, of it. The killer. Okay. It was the it was the it, the what was it? The 19, 1900 AC? WRT 1900 AC which okay. later evolved to the you know turned into the AC 3200 which had like I think I think no they all had four antennas. Yeah, I don't know. Apparently um, the Note 8 does not fit in the Gear VR. All right, no. Oh. So, there's that. Yeah, Noted. so so it's just a different style, right? It's black instead of blue, the old uh, Linksys router mm-hmm. color, mm-hmm. right? And it has the killer engine in it, supposedly to do. It's basically just QoS. It's sure. killers. It's killers QoS. So right, killer gets poo pooed on sometimes, and. And all of our actual testing and use cases for it and Sebastian's... QoS it, is good. It actually works really well. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and one of the biggest complaints we've always had is uh, that's fine if you're the only computer on your network, if you're the only computer on your internet yeah. connection, but as soon as you realize you're attached to a router that has Wi-Fi devices and you've got you know, Google Chromecasts and tablets and phones on it, like the ability for your PC to control that was cut dramatically mm-hmm. to almost nothing. So I think the idea of putting it into the router and having the manageability that that software provides on a router that now well, all it may your not hardware be devices as, go through it and your wireless devices go through it. Yeah, but it's really not going to be as granular when you're at the router level. Like the, the killer next software on the PC, you could be like, which program gets priority, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like the router is probably going to be like, which computer gets priority? And maybe maybe you can do it, it, ports, port level stuff. You can do stuff. ports, and it, it, it claims that it prioritizes gaming on it. Sure. So I don't know how it knows what that is necessarily because, you know, TCP, like UDP, but, but at the end of the day, it doesn't know the application that is doing yeah. it unless there's just specific signatures that they can recognize from it. Yeah. Now, what would make sense is if there were some kind of communication between this router and each PC. Which I don't think is a thing. 
No. I'm pretty not. sure it's not a thing. It sounds like a great idea. I just don't think yeah, it's a thing yet. Right, right. And I don't know how that communication would really take place. Yeah. Like if it would just be, you know, communicating with some kind of VM on the router and saying, hey, I'm going to, like, basically, I'm sending you these packets. Mm -hmm. Give me priority. My, my bigger concern here would be this is a router, not a PC. In other words, you usually have the killer next software doing your prioritization and it's doing it in software like on the PC side, like to do all that stuff where you have the resources of your CPU compute resources. and your compute resources, right? Sure. Compared to the compute resources in the router. This which, has a 1.8 gigahertz dual core processor. Right, which I think they is very similar what, to even what the 1900 AC oh, has. Yeah, that's pretty standard for routers these days. Yeah, I know that's, that's crazy cool. so to say. I have the 1900 AC and I've tried different open source firmwares on it to add QoS. Yeah. And actually most of the QoSs that I've tried have choked to some degree and not been able to hit the 300 megabit of my connection. Mm. Whereas if you enable but if the you QoS, disable the QoS, it oh yeah, can. you disable it, you go full oh, okay. speed, no problem. But as soon as you enable it, regardless of where you try to throttle, you just kind of artificially limited based on like processor overhead of of you know trying mm. to do the okay. QoS, right? So I don't know. May I would imagine their implementation is probably very finely tuned by now since they've been doing this for forever. Right. So maybe it can handle higher speeds. I talked with them um, today or yesterday, and I think they want they I think they want to come out and do another like live stream with us and talk about it. And maybe do some demos yeah. and well, stuff. Well, I mean, we so, have a good connection here to try yeah, it with Yeah, that's true. See. If you want to demo the QoS, this is a good connection to do mm -hmm. it for, yeah. for an entire network right. type of devices. So uh, 329 bucks, which is still ludicrous to me for a router. That's really that's high for a router. Norm, but like for high-end routers, I mean, that's pretty normal These now. days, that's... I know. I, I've seen routers for 399 I've Easy. seen routers for 500 bucks. That Nighthawk that, X10 oh, is yeah. 500 bucks. The 811 well, it's come down now, but, but it those, was. But those routers are like even higher specs than these as far as the throughput that they're capable of, right? Uh, this is just AC 2600 and sure. N600. Yeah, but. Sure, sure, sure. So, sorry, the, 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 the 499 one had AD on it, 80211 AD. Yeah, sure. Which is, which is, which is a difference maker, but uh, interesting stuff nonetheless. So Sebastian wrote that up there. So, so I got to ask. Yeah, mm -hmm. go for it. Why is there an eSATA port on a router? For so external drive. So you can share store, network storage? Yeah, it acts, it'll act like a NAS. Yeah. It's eSATA uh, slash USB. Why would you put your NAS on the edge of the network? People do it. Uh, because? If you don't want to have a computer, this acts like the computer to act know, as the host for the storage. It just seems so wrong. I mean, well, imagine the router It's not is, like that storage is sitting outside of your... No, it's not. It, it, does, it, it doesn't it, connect to the WAN. It, 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 uh, uh, it doesn't connect to the don't, WAN. We broke don't, Alex. Don't Next. grunt Come and on. go IT professional over there. Like, I know. Oh, I can't it's, believe the client it, would do a thing uh, a client would do. <sighs> Why do you have USB thumb drives attached to your computer? This is the same thing. It, I mean, not, not a lot of people use these ports, and usually the port yeah. can't go full speed anyway. I because find it's it pretty funny to do, that still has an e that has How an long e does it take you port? to dig the hot glue out of the port? You know, well, 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 there is a USB 3.0 <laughs> port on here. I mean, but, yes, but usually they can't do full bandwidth, like, you know. Yeah, but you only need to go 100 megs a second. And usually they, they have a hard time hitting oh, that because, truth. again, you're trying to do Samba. So now you have Samba overhead translation that has to happen in the CPU of the router. See, th so th that's how I would recommend if if my sister said, "How do I have a, a hard drive that me and my kids can all access from our computers?" If they already that, had this router, yeah. Yeah, right? If, you, if they had a router with USB port on, I would say do that. Yeah. So it's easy mode. Yeah, it well, is. Yeah, it right. is easy mode. That's what yeah. these. That's yes. That's what these are built for. Hard mode is building a PF Sense box. Yeah, eh, it's medium mode. <laughs> no, it's not. No, that's pretty easy. Even I can do it. Don't tell my boss that. <laughs> uh, before we go on to the next story, update on Patreon, Ryzen Shrout edited their pledge <laughs> from $4.99 to $6.99. So thank you, Ryzen Shrout. Oh, Did anybody ever man. discover what the um, no. loud noises were? Nope. I saw some people on Twitter that said they were going to investigate as well. Wait, really? Uh, oh, some local people on apparently Twitter? Apparently somebody called the news oh, station. Fox 19. They called Fox 19. Um, like huh. they know anything. Because they heard it for but a large radius. They've had calls before at night related to factories. Now, Cliff, this is not this a, was like This is not a factory. This was really like jet takeoff thrust kind of rumble. Like just down the road. But it was, but I mean, the <laughs> ground was just rumbling. The whole oh, dang place. He just gave me the Fox 19 uh, newsroom number too. So it stopped now. It hasn't happened in a little yeah. while. Yeah. Someone it does sound at. to me like somebody was doing a jet engine test. Yeah. 
Yeah, Someone got was, yelled at and like, uh, what are you doing? You can't do that right now. <laughs> yeah, because like, you know, but it's fun doing it like almost 11 o'clock at night. Well, is when it's it was it's going like on. the like, astronaut farmer down the road. Yeah. He's testing out his rocket. Yeah, <laughs> that is a bit what it sounded like when I was outside, to be honest. Yeah, it yeah. almost and sounded it like was shaking the building. Yeah. Yeah. And the airport's like as the crow flies, what, yeah. a mile from here? It is pretty. I was maybe, looking maybe, on the map Maybe earlier. two miles. It is where we're like pretty close as the crow flies we are close. cincinnati is the headquarters of ge aviation and, where they design and manufacture and test and engines. dhl domestic and uh amazon prime air yeah but it wasn't any of those because i was driving to the uh, i was driving to, to get my haircut this morning a prime air plane yeah. just came right across the trees like the, the tree line is pretty tall now on uh, on that road and it just kind of mm-hmm. surprised me i anyway. see him often now i love it was it dropping packages at your door? <laughs> no, no, not yet. We get a whole bunch in on Friday, though, so hopefully it comes back. Let's see. I don't see any jet engine testing uh, facilities there's there. There's no flyby. Like, there should be a point-to-point. What is that thing? There, there's a maintenance hangar at the, the airport, mall. but the, the main facility is over in Adams County. That's not yeah. the mall. Well, that's the auto dealer, so it wasn't happening there. Yeah, there's really, I mean, that's it. That's all there is. Uh, yeah. Vulcan renderer for Doom 3 BFG source code published. That's interesting. Uh, Dustin Land of id Software has been publishing commits to his VK Doom 3 GitHub repository. So they've added a Vulkan based renderer to Doom 3. Because, of course, they Not have. the new Doom. Yeah, Doom, Doom 3. Doom 3. <laughs> well, because the new Doom already had. Already has Vulkan. Sure, but uh, like source code was published yeah. for this as well. But what's cool about this is you're watching them basically port the engine as you as you watch the commits. game so yeah so you're watching the like you just follow this guy's string of commits and if you wanted to learn how to port you know hmm. that api to something else like you, you can learn an awful lot by just watching what he's doing basically right. right like how does he how did he solve that problem oh that's you know huh, that's right? pretty cool and, that's and cool. It, it's really really beautiful code it's it's extremely well documented it's wonderfully laid out it's it's a nice example that's that's code. what i would expect from him i follow him on twitter look he's, Justin yeah. Land. if he's you're gonna very, do very intelligent dude if you're gonna be a person doing a job like porting a freaking graphics engine <laughs> <laughs> into an older game right uh i don't think you can accomplish it unless you're rain man level uh brain power without documenting the crap I just out don't of understand everything. how yeah. I don't understand how people have time to document code. I'm too busy getting that shit done. <sighs> that like, hey, I'll figure that out later. Or actually, somebody else will figure that other but part when you, out. But later. when you go back to it later, oh no, you're I like, get you. Oh, I how the heck it. did I do this? When I was in school, I hated it. Hated it. You write the test on documentation. First, then you write the documentation. Then you write the code. Yeah. No, I did it the other way. Well, what is the minimum amount of documentation I have to get to pass this project class? Set I to one and comment. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, set variables. The end. <laughs> the end done. <laughs> uh, and last but not, nope, almost. Wait, what did we get? That, one I think that's the last the one. What is this? What? what is what is that Lee and Lee thing? Is that is that on here? I don't think he that's didn't on. remove that from last week. Aww. No, I didn't. Boo. Yeah. Boo. Mm. Uh, so the last, the true last story is fishing for Ice Lake rumors. Jeremy, what is all? What is all this? What is Ice Lake now? Well, remember how we were talking about how Generation 8 of Intel's core processors had a lot of different members? Yeah. Ice Lake might be another one, too. Oh, boy. There was some odd marketing, and because it was sort of a leak, they're discussing it. In one case, as a successor to an 8th generation, and in another, it's described as a member of the 8th generation core processor family. Hmm. So it'll be interesting to find out which of those is true. Either way, uh, long story short, Ice Lake uh, is going to match uh, our previous generation, but double the cores, double the L3 cache, and lower the frequencies so that it can still stay within that 15-watt uh, threshold. Mm. It's it's still mostly rumors at this point, but uh, with specifications like this, it's probably pretty good. And if you've got better eyes than I do, maybe you can read some of the stuff on that slide because it's... A little blurry. Well, that and it's not English. Oh, wait. Some of it's English. Also true. The numbers are. Oh, the yeah. numbers and are in English. Matters. The numbers are in English, yes. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, so this is mentioning, this is this is like coffee-like stuff in here, I think. 8700K, yeah. 8700K, 6-core, 12-thread, 95-watt parts. Um, 
Yeah, looks like these will all be used. Three point something, four point something, and four point something. <laughs> yep. <laughs> By my math, that works out. I don't know. Hey, more stuff is happening here, guys. Uh, all of the time. All right, so we're gonna skip over the Leanne Lee PC uh, Q2100 because that doesn't exist. We're gonna go straight into our picks of the week. And mine is currently set up and operating right there. It is uh, not the, 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 the GTX Sanity you see. It's that lamp. It's the Star yeah. Wars. The yeah, camera pointing at it? Yeah, that one. Uh, 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 no. Where's it? Oh, that, that one. That one's oh. pointing at it. Oh. That is a uh, Luke Skywalker lightsaber lamp that I bought at Disney World last week. But it's not properly lit Did yet. you find a hand with it? Uh, no. No, <laughs> I did not buy it. Uh, no, I don't need to talk with you. Thank you. This was this was my this was my souvenir that I brought back from Disney World last week, uh, as I brought way more stuff home for my daughter. But uh, I bought this. They had this one, and they had the uh, Darth Vader one that obviously has a different logo and everything. Uh, I don't have a I didn't have like if you go back to that shot, we have a, there's a light in it, and you really can't tell that almost at all. You can kind of see the top red. There's a red, red LED crappy light in there, um, and I've ordered a couple of new ones for it. It was eighty nine dollars. It's kind of expensive. Um, it's you know kind whatever. Of. It's fine. It's a lamp. You know, either end up on the set here or in my daughter's room, depending on how much she loves or does not love Star Wars <laughs> as she gets a little bit older. We'll see. Um, I thought it was cool. I tell you what, at that at that at the Star Wars centric gift shop at <laughs> Universal. I keep saying that. Hollywood Studios, <laughs> Disney's Hollywood Studios, they have a lot of really cool stuff there. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't like buy the holographic record, did you? figurines, busts, what's that? You didn't buy the holographic record? No, I did not buy the holographic record. Oh, I really ooh, thought about it. really cool. I wanted to go back and get it, but I don't have anything to play it on. They, I almost, you just I also, spin it. You don't got to play it? Just I also it. almost bought, uh, they had lightsaber umbrellas. <laughs> so like the, the the staff of it was a lightsaber that lit up when you opened up the umbrella and I was like mm, that's kind of cool uh, in fact actually when it was raining the day before when I was at Magic Kingdom I looked up on my app like the umbrellas and they showed up and I was like oh if I can find one of those I'll buy it what a perfect excuse mm -hmm. I never found it the next day when I was at this, at the uh, Star Wars them. store well they just didn't they don't sell everything at every park yeah uh, but yeah they had like uh, you could get customized phone cases there that they would print on demand um, they do have an amazing inventory system you were telling us about, though. Like, if you wanted to find a particular oh, hat, yeah. I want to find this hat. And the girl They'll was able to look it up. Look it and, up and tell you which store yeah. in which shelf at which park. It and was and how many they on, had. How many they had on that. Yeah. Uh, I was looking for, actually, when I was looking for this shirt, this shirt I bought for myself as well there, um, she said, you can go to this place, but it only says they have nine in stock. That's a really no, no, low number for us on that. Their their infrastructure there is amazing. It was it was awesome. It was, it was fun, though. I, I will tell you. Emmeline went to Disney World with me only knowing about BB-8. The only Star Wars character she knew and could name and cared about. We came back. She knew Stormtrooper, Darth Vader, Rey, Chewbacca. Oh. Uh, she could recognize them all. Um, she now asks Alexa to play Stormtrooper song, which is actually Darth Vader's theme. No, that's the Imperial that's March. Right. Yeah, she, Alexa, stop. Uh, so she she asks for that song now, but even when she asks for it, they, they do really cool stuff. They do stormtrooper marches through the street and stuff like that, and uh, it, it was it was a neat time. But anyway, the lamp. Apparently, you can order online. I thought it was an in store, like a Disney Parks exclusive. <laughs> That's what they want you to think, huh? That's what they want you. To That's think. That's what they wanted me to think. That's clearly what happened. This was but. the brainwashing indoctrination trip. <laughs> correct. Yes. Correct. It was. <laughs> right. She still has never seen a movie. I tried to get her to watch uh, uh, the latest one, um, Rogue One. Yeah. Yes. No. You know the really happy ending one. No, no, not Rogue One. That is no. the latest one. The no, one. no, but not uh, uh, episode. Force Awakens. Yeah. There you go. Uh, not the one where everybody dies. I wanted to go to watch the other one. <laughs> with, with, and it's got BB-8 in the front of it, so I thought at the beginning of it, so she, I thought she'd be more interested, and she just could not have cared less yet. So we'll wait. Uh, that's mine. Uh, let's move over to Jeremy. What do you got? A little flash deal for uh, people up here in Canada, because, well, you need light bulbs, right? I do. Unless you really like living in the dark. No, I need bulbs and for sure. 
five bucks a pop for these LED ones is not so bad. That's yeah. Seven watt, I just, like the 24. ones I bought were ten watts just today. I'm trying to get the brightest ones I could. Yeah, but that one That's has about a, a fifty top. watt. It's good enough for most. But it still has a heat sink up to about the midway point, which yeah. means the light that comes down is going to be minimal. Yeah, and then it might yeah, be tall. True. Like maybe be pretty. It wouldn't work well in your Star Wars lamp. Yeah, I don't yeah. think so. I, 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 you yeah. might have to break down and just get a regular old bulb, what? there, Ryan. I can't buy those anymore. Yes, you can. You can't buy incandescents. They're illegal. Oh. I have to go to the black market to go buy, buy my know, incandescents. All the way to eBay. <laughs> Before my dad died, he would he collected incandescent bulbs. See, there you go. Go right. I don't know what happened to him after that, but oh. I know he he was talking about like they're gonna take my bulbs from me. So he was collecting just like a gun. Uh, my bulbs. They're gonna take bulbs. everything. He's got his gun locker. He's got his light bulb locker. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Oh man! It was amazing. I went to AC the other day, and usually their 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 prices are higher. Yeah, the I got price. two sixty five watt LED lights. Of course, they're like seven watts equivalent, right? Yeah, uh, floodlights for seventy nine cents a piece. Yeah, seventy nine cents. Stuff is falling yeah. wow. down. That's what happens when cheap. you stop making the other kinds, <laughs> and nobody and everybody has to buy the LEDs. I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. All right. It's awesome. Uh, Josh. Me? Yes. <clears throat> <laughs> Still you. Since I've been so vociferous this evening, I know. Uh, in the past three weeks, I've built three different seasons, uh, systems for work. Um, two for contract guy and, and one for actual work. And I used these NVMe drives, the Samsung 960 Evo, and they mm -hmm. just rock. Mm -hmm. They just are so fast. They're not terrible expensive. Right now, if you look over, 229 for the 500 gig, and you get a promo code for like another 20 bucks off. Nice. So you're looking 200 bucks for uh, 500, 500 gig. gig. It's yeah, that's that's a really good price. Yeah. The 250 is 119 and the one terabyte is 429. Yeah, that, that 500 gig is is nice. Yeah. Nice nice price point. I like it. Yep. And you get I, I basically like full speed out of the 500 gig capacity. Uh there's the promo code doesn't work on the one terabyte. Hmm. Darn it. No. Weird. Son of a Oh well. 500 gigs yeah, is only the 500 anyway. it's got the the promo. Yeah. It's, it's a sweet spot. Enjoy. It is. And Alan. Uh, laptops that are you need to be more powerful than most other laptops. I'd take a look at Razer Blade. Say again. Take a look at the Razer Blade. No, the first part. For laptops that are more powerful than the average laptops. Oh. Okay. Like, like most what, of these, what kind of stuff? Most of these come with true quad, quad. Like we're talking during this podcast about, oh, these upcoming Intel chips are going to be quad core mobile parts. And. Mm -hmm. Like, you can get laptops that have quad-core parts. They're just not as power-efficient, right? obviously. Um, and the graphics, like, currently you can get them with the 1060 in them. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been this messing was, around this, with one. They're still kind of on the design. The one that you have there is still kind the, of the design very similar. that was like the... Yeah, the new ones are, are very similar. Yeah. Like, the MacBook... The original unibody yes. MacBook. Yes, original yeah. unibody MacBook yep. design. It's still got the, they've still got... Yeah, they got the mm -hmm. speakers on the side and, and yeah. stuff. They were, they were great machines. I, well, they were good machines at the very least. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't really have I'm one. I'm messing around with one with a 970M in it. It's like a couple of years old and like, it's, you know... Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, it came in handy for, you know, I was I uh, was trying to render or do raw processing in the field during the eclipse. Right. This thing does raw processing almost as fast as my desktop does it in my house. Is it is that a GPU accelerated thing? Uh, no, but it's it's pure CPU for the program right. I was using, which was DXO. It's uh, the engine when it gotcha. does the, the noise reduction for like, you know, special raw, raw processing engine that DXO mm -hmm. has. It's CPU, but it'll use all your threads that you have. Sure. So it was doing eight thread. You know, it was only taking like twenty or thirty seconds for to do a photo, yeah. which is a reasonable speed for you know. Yeah, for I've even always the wanted to review some it. of the new razors, but it's just we've never really worked with them on anything because they had the razor blade with the external graphics. Yeah. Uh, the razor core. The blade is the name of the machine. The razor core is the external GPU dock. Thunderbolt three dock. And uh, at least with 
with this model that was a couple of years, I would imagine it's still true even with the newer ones, but like I did like a, you know, clean install. As soon as Windows 10 got done installing, it defaulted to pulling up Razer Synapse, which is their little, they have like a little thing that sits on the next to the clock that just mm -hmm. handles the, downloading all the drivers, mm -hmm. right? I tried it both ways, actually. I tried it like, let Synapse do all the driver things after you did the clean install of Windows. And within like five minutes, it was basically like a factory fresh, you know, everything installed, Synaptics driver, that, the GPU driver was installed that's properly. Good, yeah, that might actually be a Razer specific thing because I know for their mice and keyboards, they ship Synapse on like just a little bit of persistent storage on the mouse. So when you plug it in, it has yeah, the yeah. installer and you can, you can tell it to ignore it all the time if you don't want to install it. But right. every time you plug it into a unique computer, it offers to pull the installer. It'll try to install So maybe it, yeah. they do a similar thing on their laptop where they have like the base portion yep. Yep. on some tiny bit of flash sitting on the board somewhere that yeah, it's that's a really good idea and and yeah. i also tried it without using synapse like initially i tried it without synapse because i was like ah, i don't want to even install that thing because i didn't know right. if it was it like was. lightweight or bloaty or whatever and it's not bloaty at all and now mm -hmm. that i've tried that but um even windows 10 currently was able to just pull down it pulled down the first it pulled down like the intel integrated gpu mm -hmm. driver and then mm -hmm. once that was established then it then the extra like the 970m showed up as like an unknown device and then mm -hmm. it just pulled down the, yeah the, Windows, windows update is is very good at that stuff well now. just the fact that it works with like that that's a technology you would normally expect to be like that mobile specific you know passing the gpu through well the, and, and and chances are if you wanted the best experience you would go download the latest geforce driver for that part right anyway right which is what i ended up doing like i ended up doing a clean install and the most recent everything because even mm -hmm. synapse wasn't pulling down the most recent geforce right. driver yeah it doesn't surprise right. me on that part um but yeah i mean everything just they're not cheap devices just works no they're not cheap but i mean you're the getting the, the current full hd version is 18.99 yeah uh with 256 gig 256 gig ssd you can get one that's like a couple years old for like 700 800 bucks used ish uh, the, the, the price like that. of the price of that new one is pretty steep compared to like an SPS 15 where you can really? get a GTX 1050 and a quad yeah. core CPU and 256 gigs of storage for certainly less than 1800 bucks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Multiple, multiple hundred dollars less than that. Right? Yeah. 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 So, you know, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, like like the, to try to the do most, it. like the, the cabby like stuff that's come out. Like, so there was that OLED Lenovo yoga, mm -hmm. right? The, the generation prior is the cabby like one I think is just now starting to ship. Correct. Right. But there was this gap where you couldn't get one at all right. for like four or five months. Yeah. Like they discontinued the previous one before the new one was even ready. The previous one was selling for like $400 cheaper for an equivalent model. Mm. So that seems to be some kind of My weird trend with the Cavi Lake laptops now for well, some reason. No, I, I think that particular model was more of an OLED screen availability and that they were built, they right. saved some of the screens for the Cavi Lake model. So they, they had to stop producing the Skylake <laughs> model for long enough to save up enough right. to relaunch out But that Cavi new Lake. model with the same screen. The Cavi you know, Lake one, the new one? Yeah, with new, the new Cavi Lake one with the OLED screen, just like the similarly yeah. spec previous one, is like three or $400 more expensive than the previous one was selling for. Hey, man. So it's really, you know. <laughs> what can I say? Doesn't seem like it does. It doesn't seem, you know. I don't know. Nothing just, else changed on it. it for are the you, same are specs. you comparing the price that it was selling for at the end of its life or the beginning of its life? Well, its life was only like eight months or something. Sure, eight months is, is a about long time. Normal a laptop world. for a laptop. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, so. I mean, that's what ordering from Lenovo. Sure, but I, if you looked no. at launch price, I bet they're probably yeah, it might have been it might have been a little and higher. It just came down. As laptop got yeah. older. I mean, I was watching it because I was interested in that laptop. Yeah. Because I was, you know, prepared to... I think the only other OLED one. laptop is the Alienware 13. Has an the OLED option. Oh, the yeah. Alienware R13. Yeah. Alienware R13. There's one of those times where I needed to enunciate. I will say that, the, again. that an OLED screen on a laptop is just an amazing thing. Still. Yeah. Like, you just can't get even close to it. I just used too many... Like, I know. Yeah. Like, white screens. <laughs> Yeah, like that's I did change I did change is, my yeah, mentality. You have to change and, all of your like themes and everything to dark. Like I, I usually have stuff, stuff dark but, anyway. Yeah. yeah. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for the show for us for this week. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. PCPro.com slash podcast. That's where you can go uh, to find all the links to everything we talked about today. Uh, show notes are there. Links to stories. 
RSS feeds, MP3 downloads, video links, video downloads, all that stuff exists there. Uh, go there uh, and find out how you can make sure you're signed up to watch and listen and subscribe and like all of the things that we do regarding podcasts on a weekly basis. Uh, that is it for us. We will be back next week, everybody. Thanks so, uh, for watching. Hey, what? people that might be listening to this might be at QuakeCon. Oh, uh, I don't, I, yeah, maybe some people. Might so if be. you're at QuakeCon, uh, hey. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, we're not there. Hey. Uh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Maybe we'll see you next year. All right. That's it for us this week, guys. See you next time. I'm Ryan Schrupp. See you at the VLAN. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. Joshua Walrath. And I'm Alan Malventano. Goodbye.